a signal to the world that we are open for business. We are now open for business. This is Cesar Vallejos bringing you yet another episode to guide you in discovering your passion and growing your business as we learn from experts in the field. Sama-sama tayong matuto sa isa na namang makabuluhang usapan tungo sa pagpapaunlad ng inyong negosyo, ang Open for Business. Mapapanood nyo yan sa Facebook, sa YouTube, siguraduhin mag-like at mag-subscribe sa aming social media page at Net25 TV. Alamin natin, suriin mula sa mga negosyante, thought leaders at mga personalidad sa iba't ibang larangan ang mga strategies, trends at mahalagang karanasan sa pagninegosyo dahil tayo ay open for business. It's not all roses when you move to the U.S. to pursue your American dream. One of the very first things you have to do is to know how to file and pay taxes. To help you get a glimpse on the nitty-gritty of U.S. taxation is Christopher Y. Coco, CEO and founder of Y. Tax LLC who's been helping countless Filipinos as well as small and medium businesses navigate the complex world of U.S. taxes. Get a few tips on how to manage finances and even increase your income stream wherever you may be as we are now open for business. Monday to Friday, 5.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. Let's get together, Sunday 25, Sunday 25. Many Filipinos Filipinos, driven by both ambition and hardships, would prefer to be immigrants in search of greener pastures. In 2021, nearly one in seven immigrants to the U.S. from Asia are from the Philippines. It's easy to say that the U.S. is one of the most popular countries that our fellow Filipinos move for a better life. One such immigrant joins us tonight. In 2010, he himself moved to the U.S. to further his career. Five years later, he established his own company in Texas, USA, specializing in cloud-based virtual tax bookkeeping called Yco Tax LLC. However, beyond his wealth of knowledge in managing financial records and aiding businesses with their accounting and taxation needs, he stands out as an advocate of financial literacy, passionately educating and empowering others to achieve financial stability. Drawing from his own life experience, his journey into the realm of entrepreneurship reflects a unique blend of compassion, 
strategic thinking and dedication. Please welcome Christopher Waiko, co-founder and CEO of Waiko Tax LLC. How are you, Chris? Mabuti naman. Kamusta? Pakahaba ng aking introduction sa iyo at napaka-stellar. <laughs> Pero oh, <why? laughs> my basic question is, bakit ka rin naman nagpunta sa Estados Unidos? Talagang gusto mo bang doon mag-aral, magtayo ng kompanya? What's your story? When I was 14 years old, uh, my twin brother was diagnosed with schizo, schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. uh, during that time, I realized that life is harder, but it gets harder when you cannot provide financially. And mm -hmm. my mom and my dad, since uh, they they were working in the hospital, mm -hmm. I really had uh, to help them financially through selling. So mm -hmm. that's why I've been uh, selling door to door. What but were you selling then? I've been selling uh, prepaid cards, mga cell phones, whatever mm -hmm. you can find uh, na mabenta. I do that because the uh, medication of my brother is like two to three times the salary of my mom and my dad combined. Wow. But then, uh, because of that, uh, even though I, I love the passion of having my own uh, income through selling, they still told me that I need to pursue my career in nursing. Because my mom and my dad, they both work in the hospital. Mm -mm. Then, yun, uh, tinapos natin yung Bachelor's of Science Nursing with a full scholarship while we're selling uh, also in the university, then sa mm -mm. province natin. Then, on uh, 2010, I took, uh, I got my visa. It's mm -hmm. an immigrant visa. Because the fastest way, on top of any other profession, in, to get in the U.S. is being a nurse. Mm -hmm. Even though you're accounting or doctor or judge, they don't give you a green card. Mm -hmm. So, I said, okay, what the deal with my parents, I'm going to finish my degree, Bachelor's of Science Nursing. But once I get my green card in the U.S., I'm on my own. I will do my, <laughs> what, what I'm, my true calling is to have my own company. Mm -hmm. So that's why I got my green card in 2010 and I did nursing as part-time to finish the contract but I did do door-to-door. -door. Three years that I didn't have my own car because I tried to save to send money to the Philippines for the rehab of my uh, twin brother because she's the inspiration. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. I met an accountant on 2010 December and that's the time that it already had a transition from healthcare now more on the finance on 2010. Wow, you, you have a very interesting story, but it was somehow mandated that you take uh, nursing. Mm -hmm. But you're passionate in selling, pero baka nga, it was not necessarily your passion because you wanted to support your brother. Mm -hmm. uh, you're given the choice, what would have been your um, course or mm -hmm. your education? Uh, my first option is uh, Bachelor's of Science in Accountancy. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, mm -hmm. you, when during that time, practicality really comes to the front mm -hmm. in terms of mm -hmm. uh, your passion. So, sabi ko naman, uh, I can be pursue my, uh, my passion pag nasa U.S. Na ko, but I cannot be in the U.S. if I'm not in a Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. Yes. That's why there are things that you have to do short-term and able to have a long-term uh, plan. Mm -hmm. So, sabi ko nga, when, uh, when you have it in you, in your heart, in your blood, in your soul, you will find a way to get there. No matter wow. what you finish. And, Sir v, we know naman the fact that everybody that finished college, they did not end what they, they have to do because there's always yeah. a pursuit of happiness. And we only have one life to lead. Yes. And that's why when you get there, you will do it tirelessly. You will do it all your heart just to be where you want. And you don't want to live your life with regrets. Wow, you know, that's a lot of insights already, Chris. Mm -hmm. And I hope your brother is okay. He's, he's doing fine. Yes, actually, the, re, uh, the reason why I go here every year is to visit him. Uh, thank God, uh, eight years na siya sa National Center for Mental Health. When we talk about advocacy, one of the things that we also promoting and uh, we are going to conduct um, annual mental health symposium in Dallas, Texas. This is a global because the proceeds of, of the, 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 the money will be donated to National Center for Mental Health mm -hmm. and also Mental Health America. Mm -hmm. So why, do, why are we doing the advocacy for mental health? Because as a business, also a CEO, like what you, your position, we encounter certain stress. Mm -hmm. And it's okay not to be okay. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why we're creating a mental health symposium awareness that you are not alone in your journey. Mm -hmm. So that's why this is one of a Filipino uh, project that we're tying up with the Consul of the Philippines mm -hmm. for, for this project that's going to be the first going to be held in Dallas, Texas. We're expecting 800 attendees and different uh, speakers from different expertise. 
then proceeds of that will be donated in two different institutions, National Center for Mental Health kung saan nakakonfine yung brother ko for eight years and then Mental Health America. Mm -hmm. Para naman, uh, kasi kung hindi tayo mentally uh, okay, hindi rin tayo magiging successful in any larangan, whether you are a CEO, whether you're a father, a son, in general. Kaya yun yung isa sa pinaka-advocacy natin. Yeah, Chris, I applaud you for that advocacy because uh, um, mental health, mental wellness mm -mm. Uh, for the several years have not been talked about. You know, sometimes, you know, uh, the family knows it, but they don't discuss openly about it. And mm -hmm. so there's uh, uh, the lacking of awareness on various options where uh, someone can be assisted or even cured or given more resources for medicines and mm -hmm. support. And, you know, congratulations for being that. And we hope that, you know, uh, you can use Open for Business and Net25 uh, to amplify your voice on those kinds of advocacy. So, talagang pinagsasama mo, you know, financial literacy, mental awareness or mental wellness, mental health mm -hmm. uh, promotion. Yes. So, bakit ka nagnegosyo sa United States? Yung iba, siyempre, parang they just build their career there. Mm -hmm. But you, in your case, you establish a business that helps MSMEs and uh, you are offering this type of service. Uh, gaano kahirap gawin yun? Al ang pag-transition from one career uh, to another, it's really challenging from internal and external factor. Mm -hmm. uh, internal, of course, kasi meron kang, uh, you struggle. Number one is uh, you, you lack knowledge about starting a business in the U.S. It's mentally challenging. Mm -hmm. And then also uh, emotionally, kasi you're trying to transition from your comfort zone to, your, to a different zone. Kasi comfort zone, ko ano yung pinag-aralan uh, natin, yun yung gusto nating ma-practice. Mm -hmm. But then, that's an internal uh, is, uh, internal challenge, no? Transitioning. And then external din, meron tayong tinatawag na cultural indifferences. Mm -hmm. So when I get to the, U, uh, to the U.S., specifically Texas, these are populated with Hispanic. Mm -hmm. Hindi lahat English speakers. Mm -hmm. And there, there are a lot of clients that you would like to talk to. They are more comfortable with their lingua franca, yung Spanish speaking mm -hmm. nila. They would rather do business with an accounting or taxation firm na nagsasalita ng Spanish. Uh, so may tao ka or kasamahan ka na Hispanic din? Yes, exactly. So ang hinahar natin sa ganyan, uh, enable to, you have to hire somebody that's your witness. Kaya... Uh -huh. 93% ng client namin are Spanish speakers. Ako lang yung Filipino. Mm -hmm. Kaya puro Spanish talaga yung mga tao natin, yung mala sa receptionist hanggang sa mga uh, accountants and tax professionals. So na-review mo rin yung Spanish 101 mo? <laughs> oh yeah, Spanish 101, ang pinakamagandang napanood ko, yung Dora. Yeah. I don't know yung napanood niyo, yung Dora na Dora the Explorer. Yeah, yung mga basic. Tapos we listen to some uh, music in Spanish. Para naman mas maintindihan natin, mas mabilis ang learning. Kaya sanay din naman ako ang murder pag gutom. Survival yung Spanish natin eh. Pag gutom tayo, oh, Pero buti na lang at least uh, pinag-aralan natin. Part ng, ng uh, history ng mm -hmm. Pilipinas ang Spanish language at marami tayo dyan, di ba? Pero ngayon, parang you're telling me that you know, even in your employment, di ba? Parang you're mm -hmm. getting more uh, other nationalities to cater to the needs of the market that you serve. Mm -hmm. So, that's another challenge, yes. uh, Chris. Diba? So, how is it coming up with a business? In this case, you're catering to a different nationality. At the same time, you are employing different nationalities mm -hmm. to serve the needs of that nationality. The, the most important factor, sabi nga ni Tony Robbins, uh, we don't lack resources. What we lack would be resourcefulness. So the first thing I got in the U.S., I stopped watching, kaya hindi tayo masyadong oriented sa mga TV show, we, we sta, start learning what are the different free business resources in the U.S. Merong uh, state na small business administration, okay. they provide you mentors, uh -huh. they provide you coach, they provide you free money. Ngayon, iga-guide ka ng mga mentors from how to register the business, how to hire. So, meron akong four different mentors mula sa HR, operations, hanggang sa finance. And then, yung sa ano natin, uh, mental health. Meron tayong mga mm -hmm. mentors dyan. And then, they provide you more uh, uh, insights kung ano yung mga free money ng government. Alam ba natin na ang city, nagbibigay sila ng free money up to uh, $15,000 kung magpa-provide ka ng employment. Mm -hmm. uh, alam ba natin ang state, nagde-develop sila ng mga skilled training 
pagdating sa pag-practice ng mga soft skills like Microsoft Word, uh, use of email. So yung mga yun, kung uh, ang kailangan lang natin is we need to seek those kind of free resources and then always have a regular consultation with your mentors at also free din sila, yung mga advisors. Ito yung mga retired executives. Oh, oh, wait lang, Chris. Mm -mm. Yan yung resources na sinasabi mo. Yan ba ay lahat ng states ng Amerika nakikita yan o depende dun sa kung gaano kayaman yung state na kinabibilangan mo? Actually, may budget allocation ang gobyerno at saka yung state kasi government has their own budget allocation specifically for SBA. Tawag natin yan Small Business Administration. Mm -hmm. So, ang government, nag-aalat sila ng mga tauhan na full-time para magturo. To answer your question, lahat ng states merong ganyang uh, funding resources. Ngayon, ang state level itself and city level, meron tinatawag na Economic Development Corporation. Ibig sabihin yung mga katulad nating immigrant, pwede tayong uh, magkaroon ng consultation sa EDC, which is the Economic Development Corporation of Dallas. Bibigyan kanila ng uh, kung paano gumawa ng business plan, bibigyan kanila ng market analysis sa business na gusto mong tahakin, and then bibigyan ka rin nila ng mga mentors and advisors kung ano yung mga strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats yung napinapasok mo na negosyo. It's just all up to you how you will leverage or how you would access it sabi nga nila, if you want to earn faster, you have to learn faster. Mm -hmm. So, ganitong economy. Kaya, ay ang kagandahan sa Amerika, marami tayong libreng uh, access na funded ng government, ng state at saka city. Magkakaiba sila ng mga department, pero ang advocacy nila is mag-promote ng economy, mm -hmm. whether you are immigrant or existing na citizen sa Amerika. Wow, exciting. Going to the U.S. Pero, total, Chris, lagi ka naman pumupunta dito sa Pilipinas, di ba? Mm -hmm. So, wala bang ganon dito sa atin? Or wala ka bang balak na, o oh, sige, habang ginagawa ko sa, tumutulong ako ng ibang mga uh, nationalities mm -hmm. sa, iba, sa ibang bansa, wala ka bang balak na, oh, dito kaya, I'm sure I've mentioned, of course, I guessed a lot of CEOs, thought leaders mm -hmm. here, who's in charge with MSME development, and somehow that's their wish. They want, you know, more support, Uh, mm -mm. coming from the government. So, what's your observation? Ano yung meron naman sa Pilipinas or ano yung pwedeng i-adapt ng mga Pilipino or ng gobyerno na pulisiya ng Estados Unidos ma-i-apply dito sa Pilipinas? That, that's a very good uh, question, si Arvino. Isa sa mga na-attendan ko last year, yung tinatawag na trade mission. Uh, meron mm -hmm. tayong tinatawag na Philippine American Chamber uh, mm -hmm. Commerce which has a tie-up sa government. Uh, last year, nag-attend tayo ng uh, dalawang linggo yata o isang linggo na trade mission kung saan ipinakilala ng bawat syudad mula sa Manila, Bataan, sa Central Luzon mm -hmm. kung ano-ano yung mga opportunity nila sa mga foreign investors. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we dealt with the governor, with the mayor. Mula sa Manila, we had a business meeting with the president and vice president and also sa mga governor. Binigyan nila tayo ano yung mga resources na libre kagaya ng mga economic zone na may mga tax credits silang binibigyan tax-free holidays sa Clark, Pampanga, mm -hmm. and, uh, binibigyan nila ng free rent. So, ang dami nating uh, pwedeng ma-access dito. Ang isa lang sa challenges natin, hindi siya na nabobrot out publicly. Mm -hmm. So, ito, uh, kailangan mag-inquire tayo sa city, sa city development kung ano yung mga project na pwedeng ilaan sa mga katulad nating foreign investors or tao. Katulad ko, nag-hire tayo ng mga Pilipino Since yung trabaho natin is virtual, nag mm -hmm. ng employee ng mga tao na they could be executive assistants, kaya ang dami na lagi tayong pumunta dito para makipag-coordinate sa iba't ibang organization. And bawat city and province, meron sila mga project na nagbibigay ng free rent, tax-free ng next six months kung maglalagay ka ng office doon sa Pampanga, Bataan, Subic, Sambuanga, even Manila. Mm -hmm. or yun yung trade mission na tinatawag mm -hmm. natin. Mm -hmm. And you avail that. It happens um, you know, regularly, I think. It, it happens. Uh, kaya lang ang planning nun para makapag-participate ang mga... Ngayon, itong project na to, sa Filipino-American lang sa Amerika, uh, ito yung trade mission. Pero every year, ginagawa ito. So, mm -hmm. kailan lang makipag-ugnayan sa mga Chamber of Commerce, sa mm -hmm. mga Rotary yan. O kaya naman, uh, they can inquire to me <laughs> para yes, ma-connect ko sila. For you to be represented. Yeah, sa Texas Chamber. Okay. So, this one, uh, it's your expertise. For someone new in the U.S. or planning to emigrate there from the Philippines, what should be their top considerations when it comes to U.S. taxes? Uh, Unang-una sa pagdating natin sa taxation, ang mga middle bracket, yung sinasabi natin na mga professionals, mm -hmm. Uh, yan ang pinaka-high tax. 
Kasi ito yung... Pag sinabing high tax, malaking singilan yan. Mga malaki, mga 39% percent minimum. 39. Yan, okay. mga ganyan pumapasok. Bakit? Kasi Ayos wala naman sila mga na. deductions eh. Lalo na nung 2018, nagkaroon tayo ng TCJA, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Tinanggal lahat ng deductions para sa mga empleyado na gumagamit ng gas nila sa pagtatrabaho. Uh, yung nagtatrabaho sa bahay, wala na mga deductions. Tinanggal na yan sa past administration. But ang nangyari, nagkaroon ng uh, mas mataas na taxes yung kanila. So, kaya sabi ko nga, kaya ang goal natin is entrepreneurship. Kasi sa entrepreneurship... So, mm -hmm. ibig sabihin dati, parang ang daming kaltas. May kaltas mm -hmm. dito, kaltas ton, ganyan, gasolina, ganyan, ganyan. Yung sinasabi yung mo Yung mga kanina. sa mga expenses ng oh, empleyado. Pero dahil uh, expenses ng empleyado, empleyado, ngayon, parang isa na lang. Tinanggal pero malaki. Na. Oo. Ay. Tinanggal na nila yung, bis, yung employees' expenses. So, ngayon, yung taxes nila mas tumaas. Kumbaga, parang nag-compensate lang. Parang ganun. Oh, parang kumbaga, dati, mas mababa yung tax na kinocontribute. Ngayon, lumaki. In other words, oh. ang nagbabay na malaking tax yung mga professionals. Ito oh, okay. yung mga kumikita ng $80,000 and above na puro empleyado. Which is, parang nasabi natin, may middle income yun. Yeah, mga oh. doktor, dentista, yan. Sila yung mga subject, mga engineer, IT, yung matataas okay. ang mga tax niyan. Kaya tayo okay. nagnegosyo kasi marami tayong incentive sa gobyerno ng okay. IRS. Ito yung pwede tayo mag-deduct. Pagpunta ko dito, yung interview ko na to, pwede kong i-deduct yung plane ticket ko. Ayan, mm -hmm. o kaya nag-check in ako sa hotel, pwede ko rin i-deduct. So, ang, mga, ang taxation talaga, binabawasan yung tax contribution ng mga tao na nagnenegosyo nag katulad natin. Okay. Kaya tayo pumasok sa larangan I ng see. entrepreneurship. Your advocacy, I think, is you know, to leave that uh, middle income class and be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Oh, from professional to entrepreneurship, which you can do sometimes uh, at the same time. Oo, okay. kasi uh, yung uh, kagaya ng industry natin, it can be virtual eh. You can, oh, I can work. Okay. Katulad ngayon, katatapos ko lang ng meeting, nag-work ako ng gabi. Yun nga lang, medyo ano, graveyard tayo. But at oh. the same time, we can still uh, make uh, and do business online. And yun nga, para may, we can uh, hit two birds in one stone. Madalaw ko yung twin brother ko sa National Center for Mental Health. And then with my family here, pero I can still keep my business. Nakakapag-work pa rin tayo online. Mm -hmm. Hindi katulad ng mga ibang profession, kailangan physically present sila. Yes. Kasi lalo na nung COVID situation, uh, marami tayong kaibigan na uh, uh, pumano yung parents nila because of COVID, hindi sila nakauwi. Kasi mm -hmm. nga, napakadaming uh, maraming pasyente na mas nangangailangan ng servisyon nila. Mm -hmm. And kaya we salute them, but at the same time, we uh, educate them na dapat meron silang mental health balance and also financial literacy is very important. Na hindi puro bigay ng bigay, dapat merong nasa save, na invest And then para at the end, pag nag-retire sila, hindi sila aasa sa ibang tao para sa month-to-month -month na income nila. Kaya tuloy-tuloy yung ating advocacy pagdating sa mental health awareness and financial literacy.
Saan ka ba nararamdaman ng mga signs ng meron pa? Pero post really happens. In my case, I had a condition called endometriosis. Oh. Miss Corina, ang ganda po ng hair niyo. Ano pong shampoo niyo? <laughs> Mapa-senior man kay you. My apos are here. They're here with me and they give me such joy. And so, kung hindi ako magtatrabaho, how could I spoil them? Yes. <laughs> oh, Gen Z. A nar is actually an accent from Australia. So like when you say no, you don't say no. They say nar. Be the key dito. So my. So my. Let's just always choose to be kind. Kala Umaga! Kaya ugaliin ang tumutok kung saan masaya at maganda ang simula ng araw. 10 a.m. to 12, lunas hanggang biyernes, kada umaga. Let's get together, Sunday 25. Sunday 25. How does your company support immigrants in understanding and managing their tax obligations? Sabay mo na to, what are mm -hmm. some common misconceptions or challenges individuals face when dealing with their taxes and how does your company help address these issues? Pag dumating tayo doon na meron tayong employer, ang sinasabi natin, wag nating i- i-withheld yung tax. Dapat nagko-contribute tayo monthly. Maraming tao na nagbabakasyon dito sa Pilipinas, sabi nila, hindi mo na sila magbabayad ng tax. Pwede kasi yon Pwede ka kasi magbayad at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Ngayon, ang nangyayari, dahil uh, gumasa sila ng $10,000 dahil nagbakasyon sila dito sa Pilipinas, no? hindi nila binalik yung pera sa IRS. Kaya at the end of the year, yung kinuha nila na hindi sila nag-contribute ng enough na taxes, that's why kumita sila ng $100,000, din binalik yung $10,000, $20,000, nakalimutan nila, no? Doon mm. nagkakaroon ng penalty. Sabi ko, nga sa kanila, pagka meron tayong kita, dapat meron kang 10% na pupunta sa travel fund mo, 10% sa emergency fund, and then yung natitira doon, doon naman pupunta yung 80% sa taxes and sa panggastos. So, dapat nauuna muna yung uh, income minus savings plus investment equals expenses. Ganyan yung formula. Ngayon, um, yun yung mga challenge natin is paano tayo... Uh, may educate ang common misconception ng karamihan na pwede tayong makalimot pwede <laughs> pwede nating uh, ma-skipan yung pagbabayad pero that's wrong no ano mas mahigpit uh, US or Philippines uh CRB, ang ang taxation sa US automated ibig sabihin within 3 years expect uh, mas kung kung pagdating sa tightness and then sa sa collection uh, US pa din Kasi dito sa uh, Pilipinas, meron pa rin mga manual eh. Right? Yeah. Dito, Although, uh, slowly, we're going there, correct? Yes, uh -huh. uh, pero yung sabi natin, yung ginagawa na ng Amerika na sa way mga past 50 years to 80 years advance na tayo sa, mm -hmm. sa US. Dito, medyo manual pa tayo, no? Mm -hmm. Kaya nahihirapan pa mga IRS collector kung paano mamonitor yung mga hindi nagbabayad ng buwis. Uh -huh. uh, maraming mga loopholes pa din dito. Doon kasi mahirap dahil automated oh, lahat. Mahirap mo ng takasan. Pero parang gaano din ka importante yun. Siyempre parang like si for example, in government offices, parang minsan nababalita pa dito sa atin, even banks, parang napapasok pa na hack pa. Oh. Uh, doon ba talagang napag-uusapan din yun? Meron din na hack sa US. <laughs> kasi kung gaano ka kung gaano tayo ka advance sa uh, uh, pagdating sa sa ang government ganun din ka advance ang hacker <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, tama oh, yeah, they innovate too <laughs> kaya wala namang uh, wala naman yatang immune sa hindi ma-hack no kasi ang IRS na hack din ng 2015 mm -hmm. i think 2015 mm -hmm. or somewhere na hack din yan mm -hmm. kaya lang ang pagdating kasi sa advancement kaya mas mataas ang security uh, dito sa Pilipinas, hindi ako masyadong pamilyar kung gano'ng kadalas ang mga na-hack dito, no? And then doon kasi kaya iniiwasan natin usually yung mga cash transaction. Uh, sinasuggest natin kung may credit card, ah, so... ang, ang mga Pilipino dapat mag-credit card sila. Uh -huh. Hindi naman para gumastos ka ng gumastos kasi uh, CRB, pag yung kliyente or gumagamit ng credit card, pwedeng i-dispute. Kung uh -huh. nga may 10,000 na unauthorized transaction, ibabalik yung pera na yun eh, uh -huh. within one week pag alam na medyo spam or scam yung transaction. Ah. Kaya credit card is also 
a good if it's uh -huh. meant to be used wisely and not impulsively. Uh -huh. It's also for your security. Yes, uh -huh. oo. Kasi see. yung cash or even yung debit card mo sa banko pag uh, tsaka may naiipon kang points sa credit card na pan-travel. Oh. <laughs> Pagka kasi debit card din, ang tagal. Pag natag natanggal yung $10,000, it takes forever for you to get the $10,000 back. Lalo na kung yes. iskam yan. Okay, that's good. Okay, mm -hmm. how important is accurate bookkeeping for individuals and what advice do you offer to help and maintain organized records? Madali lang lahat yan kung ma-adapt tayo sa paggamit ng credit card or debit card kasi... Importante yung meron tayong monthly monitoring. Sabi nga nila, it doesn't matter how much you earn eh. What matters is how much you save and how much you invest. Pero paano mong malalaman yung saving and investment mo kung hindi mo alam yung total expenses mo? ba? Diba? So ang suggestion natin, lalo na sa mga may trabaho, uh, dapat they do quarterly check. I-download nila yung mga transaction nila, hanapin nila yung bawat gastos nila mula sa eskwela, mula sa sasakyan, sa bahay, magkano ba? Dapat within 80% lang yan eh, kasama yung tax na binabayad. Para na mo monitor, kasi you cannot hit the target eh. Kaya pagka na, na below 80% yan, meron silang allowance na 20% na mag-save at saka mag-invest. So mahirap kung puro cash yung ginagamit natin. Tapos dapat gumamit tayo ng mga cloud system katulad lahat ng banko sa US and mga credit card. Pwede mo nang emerge yung transaction sa isang uh, accounting software na QuickBooks katulad yan na automatically nagre-record ng monthly income and expenses mo. Tapos sa uh, ilalim no makikita mo yung disposable income mo na ay ang laki pa lang na natitipid ko no. Mm -hmm. So kung so kahit na hindi ka kumpanya, limbawa for your personal use lang, pwede rin yun kasi free software siya, pwede ganun. Merong free trial na minsan naman $15 per month lang magkano lang yun no. Mm -hmm. Pero doon nakikita mo lahat ng income and transactions. And importante rin dapat na kasama ang pamilya. Dapat pati yung mga bata uh, maturuan na anak uh, we live within the means and mm -hmm. ang pag-iimpok is very important. Kasi yun naman yung pwedeng ipamana ng mga magulang na they can be yung mga anak maging uh, sustainable pag wala na ang mga magulang sa pagtitipid uh, at pag invest Yun ang pinaka-importante. Wow. Very practical um, insights uh, on making sure that uh, we save and we invest. Mm -hmm. Pero uh, numerous times you mentioned about investing. Ngayon ba sa mga panahong ito, alimbawa may sa halip na Ilagay mo sa banko na mm -hmm. maaaring mababa ang interest or siyempre yung halaga ng pera noon ay maaaring hindi na, hindi na talaga mm -hmm. halaga ng pera ngayon. Mm -hmm. Saan ba um, pwedeng i-invest ng mga tao yun? Dahil diba, pag Chris, ang dami ding mga investments. Mm -hmm. Pero siyempre kasama sa financial literacy mo siguro na saan ba Uh, pwedeng mamili ang mga tao naman kung saan nila ilalagak ang kanilang pera. Isa sa mga sinasabi natin, number one, lalo na sa, sa I can say in the standpoint sa Amerika, no? pagka sa banko, good luck, hindi kikita yan. 0.000 something, yun yung tinatawag na tax now. Pag may interest yan, kahit ang dollars, yung uh, kinita ng pera mo, matatax pa din yan. Ang pag i oh. nila dapat dalawa. Oh. Yung tax so, later... So parang inilalagay mo lang yung pera sa banko, sa banko. para lang maitago. Wala maitago. kang mapagtaguan sa bahay mo. Parang oh. ganyan. Oo. Oh. Ang suggestion <laughs> lang natin dyan, CRB, sa banko, ang enough pera lang na ilalagay mo doon yung 3 to 6 months na gastos. Kung kumikita oh. ka ng gastos mo sa pamilya is 10,000 per month, dapat mga meron kang 30,000 na savings. Okay. Pagkayari, ang tawag doon, emergency fund. No? 30,000 uh, 30, enough na na pwede mong gamitin sa mga bigla ang panggasos, may nagkasakit sa pamilya, nagpadara ng pera sa, sa kamag-anak sa Pilipinas, o kaya naman may bigla ang gastos sa education. Mm -hmm. Ngayon, pag meron ka ng 3 um, months of uh, savings, pwede ka na mag-invest. Ang tinatawag natin mga investment, uh, yung ibang kompanya sa 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 Amerika, meron tinatawag na 401k. Ang 401k naman, parang uh, nagko-contribute ng half yung employer, nagko-contribute din ng half yung employee. So, for example, $20,000. $10,000 doon nilalagay ng employer and $10,000 doon nilalagay ng employee na pwedeng lumago yung pera mo between 4 to 8 or 12 percent. Depende oh, sa market. Oh. Oo, kasi at least half lang yung kinontribute mo. And paraan din yun ng mga kompanya para makip yung employees. Di ba? Kasi alam nila na 50% kinokontribute. Eh. Yun naman, pag winidraw mo yung pera before 59 and a half years old, matatax ka naman doon. Yung tax, uh, never naman. Ito yung tinatawag natin mga life insurance. Kasi di ba lalo na kung nagtatrabaho ka, 
merong mga minimum lang, $15, $20, yung mga anak mo, kunan mo. Kasi ang life insurance, nag a siya. Pag na-withdraw yung pera doon, wala kasing tax yun eh. Kagaya nung mm. nagka-cancer sa pamilya, hindi mm. mo alam yung nanay, yung katulad ng kliyente namin na nurse, na-diagnose siya na, ng uh, cancer. Na-withdraw nila yung half million na walang tax. Mm -hmm. Pero during that time, nag-start sila kasi ng maaga pa, $200 per month lang. But mm -hmm. ang kalpalit nun, after 10 years, merong half million na nakuha yung pamilya. So, yung sinasabi natin, may mga life insurance na kumikita rin ng pera between 3.45% and above. Mm -hmm. Kaya yun yung mga ibang At saka ang sabi nila, mabilis naman ang panahon ngayon. Yung sinasabi mong five years, you know, parang in a flick of a finger, minsan parang hindi na natin namamalayan. Mm -hmm. Lalo na pang gastos natin, yung mga daily gastos natin, monthly expenses, mas mataas mga sa $200 yan eh. Uh -huh. O bibili ka ng mga bagong-bago, pabango, ba diba? So dapat, ang nilagay natin yung pera natin, may potential na lumago, hindi malugi. Okay. May potential na lumago, hindi malugi. Mm -hmm. With the ever-changing tax rules, how do you keep your clients informed and compliant with the latest regulations? Kasi baka maraming pagbabago. Alam mo, sabi ko nga parang ang, ang tax rules natin, parang every year may mga add-on, may mga deleted na <laughs> rules. Ang ginagawa namin, nag-provide tayo ng free workshop sa mga Chamber of Commerce, either virtual or sa local. Mm -hmm. Meron tayong 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, we have a YouTube channel that we mm -hmm. do Tax Savings Tuesday. Yun yung YouTube channel ko, Chris Y. Coco, para maka-update uh, sila sa mga bagong rules pagdating mm -hmm. sa mga tax savings uh, ways. And also, na-invite tayo katulad ng Uh, sa Philippine Chamber of Commerce, sa Silicon Valley, sa California, nag-conduct uh, tayo ng free workshops. Kasi nagbabahagi naman tayo ng kung ano man yung narating natin sa buhay, nagbabahagi tayo ng kakarampot na kaalaman para mas maging valuable naman yung uh, pagkita ng mga Pilipino mm -hmm. sa Amerika in uh, whatever ways we can na makatulong. Kasi nagsimula tayo sa lahat, sa wala. And then habang natututo tayo, it's uh, sharing is caring. Wow, wow. Very insightful there. Speaking of your experience, uh, growing up in the province, you learned early on the value of money and so now you also advocate for financial literacy. How does your company provide educational support or resources to clients beyond tax filing, helping them understand their financial situations better? I think you are, mm -hmm. you know, the fact that you are sharing a lot of this mm -hmm. information and knowledge is already financial literacy. Maybe if they want to invite you or to get you to talk somewhere, how can they do that? So, sa mga Philippine Nurses Association, sa mga Philippine uh, Chamber, even yung iba't ibang Rotary Organization, uh, they can invite us for a 30-minute uh, financial literacy mm -hmm. education. Uh, we're just giving them 10 tips on how to invest and how to save money, especially if you're a first-time immigrant. Yan, mm -hmm. ginagawa natin ng... Uh, workshop yan. Oh, wag na muna natin sasabihin yun para mag-attend kayo doon sa oh, workshop yan. ni Chris. <laughs> yan, ganyan ginagawa natin. Lalo na sa konsul uh. ng Houston, uh, nagbabolunteer din tayo dyan, lalo na yung mga nagre-renew ng passport o yung mga birth certificate nila, dual citizenship. Yes. Uh, nagbabolunteer tayo doon in return na makuha nila yung contact information namin okay. para mag makapag-attend sila. Okay. So what upcoming trends or changes in taxation do you foresee and what advice would you give individuals and businesses to prepare for these changes proactively? I think um, uh, unang una, like what we said, uh, they need to, especially pag kumikita na sila ng $80,000 and more, wag na sila maglagay ng mga dependents. Mm -hmm. uh, yung tinatawag natin mm -hmm. kasing dependents, CRV, ito yung mga anak, mga mm -hmm. parents. Kasi pag naglalagay ka ng mga dependents, anak or parents, hindi ka nagko-contribute ng malaki. And mm -hmm. at the problem, pag 80,000 and up na yung mga, 80,000 dollars annually, ah, pag mm -hmm. malaki na yung kinikita mo, natatanggal na yung mga deductions na yun eh. So, dadagdagan yung tax mo, kahit na meron ka mga dependents. I see. Ang mga credits at mga benefits lang para sa mga tao na kumikita ng 80,000 and below. Mm -hmm. Kaya, mas maganda, mag-contribute sila ng mas malaki and then mag-aral sila ng iba't ibang paraan kung saan nila pwedeng ipark yung pera nila na pwedeng lumago na hindi matatax. Kagaya ng mga napag-usapan natin kanina. Mm -hmm. Mga 401k, mga life insurance, mga, yun lang yung mga basic mm -hmm. na conservative. And in your case, salimbawa, Chris, parang, you know, they, they're so inspired and then they want to go into that. Ikaw naman, na ililink mo sila sa proper resources then. 
Oh, oh, katulad... Parang companies na pwede silang where they can invest na. Oh, oh yes. Uh, meron tayong mga part, third party we do believe in collaboration. Meron tayong mga third party na nagtuturo kung ano yung risk and ano yung rewards ng bawat investment. Mm -hmm. Yun yung role natin because I'm now a business developer mula sa ano yung mga risk nito. Meron tayong for, uh, certified financial planner na magtuturo at mag-guide sa kanila one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. Kailala nila mag- uh, set up ng consultation na 30 minutes para mas maintindihan nila kasi it's case to case basis eh. mm -hmm. you also you know come here often in the Philippines uh, anong plano mo Chris don't you think of coming up with another company here in the Philippines also or do you still encourage Filipinos to try it there in the United States? Yeah, speaking of encourage, uh, na naparangalan tayo ng Gawad America as Business Person of the Year sa California, sa Hollywood, and also sa Texas. Mm -hmm. So yung recognition na yun, mas lalo tayong nabuboost yung confidence natin uh, na magtayo ng company or makipag-tie up sa company dito sa Pilipinas sa mga virtual uh, offices kasi maraming pwedeng paraan na kumita ng pera at uh, work from home. Kaya mm -hmm. yun yung uh, nakipag-ugnayan tayo sa iba't ibang business organization like interna um, International Business Processing Outsource. Ito yung mga back offices ng organization na pwede tayo makipag-link and mag-hire tayo ng maraming uh, employees na para naman makapagbahagi uh, tayo na ng uh, income sa kanila pero working from home. Lalo na yung mga may mga anak sa bahay, na single parent or single mom, sila yung pa ang tinatarget natin na matulungan para mm -hmm. at least they can attend the needs. Tsaka ma maiwasan natin yung so much expenses kasi pupunta ka sa trabaho mo, gastos, gasolina, pagkain. Mm -hmm. So ayan, marami tayong uh, meetings and uh, coordination sa mga different organizations like chamber, uh, mga business processing outsource organization both here sa Manila and ibang part like mga Pampanga sa mm -hmm. uh, Sambales. Wow, you know this has been a very uh, insightful, exciting um, conversation um, with uh, Chris. Pero bago ka namin pakawalan, Chris, how will they find you? How will they I I, I heard that uh, not only uh, are you a successful entrepreneur? You mm -hmm. also are a philanthropist, event host, fashion model. Ano pa yung iba mong gawin at paano ka uh, matatawagan ng ating mga una? May, may mga Pilipino tayo na talagang gustong magbalak pumunta sa Estados Unidos. Mm -hmm. Yung iba naman gustong magtayo ng businesses doon. Paano sila magabayan sa kanilang mga tax concerns? At siyempre sa mga Pilipino, who would want to invest in other things so mm -hmm. that we will, they will also be successful in their um, financial plans. May dalawang paraan na pwede naman nilang i-search. No? Yung Chris Y. Coco, yun yung full name ko. Meron tayong lahat yan. May LinkedIn, may Facebook, may Instagram, may YouTube. Mm -hmm. Pwede sila mag-connect doon. And then, uh, yung ating uh, website, yung company natin, ycotax.com, W-Y-C-O-T-A-X.com. So, pag ginugal nila either Chris Y. Coco or Y. Cotax, kahit nasan man sila lugar, mm -hmm. uh, ma pwede natin uh, sila makap makapag-connect sa atin at uh, makareach out Kaya we made it accessible through social media. Hanapin lang nila Chris Y. Coco, lalabas na yan. Dahil ang dami na natin mga publicities, kaya hindi mahirap mm -hmm. na makipag-ugnayan sa atin. Ano mga tips mo naman sa ating mga uh, MSMEs para sila ay patuloy na mamayagpag sa kanilang mga maliliit na negosyo? I think sa mga MSC natin, sa in general, dapat uh, matutunan muna natin yung uh, budgeting na tinatawag. Dapat ma alam natin kung ano yung gastos natin sa personal and family. Hindi dapat natin minimix ang business at personal expenses. Dahil sabi nga nila, kung, kung gano'n man kalaki yung kita mo, kung yung maliit na kita mo, hindi mo mapagkasya, hindi mo rin mapagkakasya yung malaking kita. And then also yung dapat, uh, mentorship is very important, having advisors na nandyan that you meet them every six months or kahit na quarterly. Kasi sabi na natin si RV na you cannot see yourself if you are in the frame. Kailan mm. meron tayong outside perspective through mentorship and uh, through uh, business resources like uh, what we have in the U.S. At saka manood lang dapat ma maging lifelong learner tayo para sa ikakigiginhawa ng ating personal and business life. Wow, and that ends our conversation with the CEO and founder of Waiko Tax LLC, Christopher Waikoko. Open for business. We'll be back. Stay with us.
Mga kauno, ready na ba kayo sa panibagong season ng tawanan at kulitan? Mga bagong celebrities, ready na sumayo sa pangkumay time sa Trunk Tunt Chaba. Papa P, tuloy-tuloy pa rin ang pagpapasaya sa kanyang mga prank challenges. Abangan din ang mga bagong prank character na may hugulat sa inyo. Tama niyo po, preso. At mga star kada, jo-joy na rin sa pagigipagsulitan. All that and more sa new season ng pinakamakulit at pinakamasayang prank show sa balat ng telebisyon. Kasama ang nag-iisang prank master. Ako yun, Joey Dupeson. Oh no, it's B.O. We're only. And for business news, North-South Commuter Railway ready for 2027 parcel operations. The parcel operations of the North-South Commuter Railway from West Valenzuela to Malolo segment is expected by the second quarter of 2027 according to the Department of Transportation. A full operation is set for the third quarter of 2029. Meanwhile, the Philippine National Railway said that the construction of the Tutuban Malolos N1 and Malolos Clark N2 segments are on schedule, hoping to be fully operational by 2029. The 147-kilometer NSCR project will connect Malolos, Bulacan with Clark International Airport and Tutuban, Manila to Calamba, Laguna. The NSCR will have 35 stations and 3 depots and expected to reduce travel time from Clark to Calamba to 2 hours instead of 4.5 hours. ADB approves $2.1 billion financing for the Bataan Cavita Link Bridge. The Asia Development Bank approved up to $2.1 billion in financing for the construction of the Bataan Cavite Interlink Bridge. This project is aimed at completing the transport loop around Manila Bay and provides a better link from Metro Manila to Central Luzon and nearby Cavite, Laguna, Batangas, Rizal, and Quezon provinces. Once completed, the bridge would reduce travel time to one and a half hours from five hours previously between Bataan and Cavite and about two hours from four hours between Bataan and Metro Manila. Open for business is at the helm, RSA hero of philanthropy. There was only one Filipino in the elusive list of Forbes Asia's heroes of philanthropy for 2023. It's no other than SMC President and CEO Ramon Ang. RSA, as he is fondly called, was among the 15 personalities in Asia Pacific recognized for their efforts to reach out and help as many people. He ranked fourth in Forbes' latest list of wealthiest Filipinos with a net worth estimated at $3.4 billion. Ang's commitment to donate 500 million pesos to build schools for underprivileged children in Manila was honored by the Business Magazine. Mula 2020, personal umanong nakapagbigay ng mahigit 150 milyong pisong halaga ng scholarship grants at medical aid ang RSA Foundation. Kinilala rin ang pamumuno ni Ang na nagresulta sa pagpapatayo ng limang eskwelahan sa Metro Manila, pagsuporta sa relief measures noong panahon ng pandemya at pagpupondo sa mga inisyatibong may kinalaman sa paglilinis ng mga ilog. Sinasabing malaking papel ang ginampanan ni Ang para baguhin ang pinakamalaking food manufacturer sa bansa tungo sa pagiging diversified conglomerate na may interes sa banking, energy, power, utility at toll roads. 
pinangunahan rin ni RSA ang SMC sa aktibong pagtugon sa iba't ibang hamon na kinaharap ng bansa sa mga nakalipas na taon. RSA strongly believes that empowering a wide range of Filipinos with education and skills is key to unlocking the country's potential. He said this includes not only the youth but also adults in less privileged areas who seek better jobs or want to start their own businesses. Monday to Friday, 5.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. Our best word of the week is taxable event. A taxable event is an action or transaction that may result in taxes owed to the government. Common examples of federal taxable events include receiving a payment of interest and dividends, selling stock shares for a profit, and exercising stock options. Navigating the intricate landscape of U.S. taxation can present unique challenges for migrants settling in the country. Understanding the nuances of the tax system is crucial for newcomers to ensure compliance, minimize tax liabilities, and take advantage of available benefits. Thanks to WICO Tax, help is available in managing finances and filing correct taxes. More than that, the passion and entrepreneurial spirit of its founder, drawn from his own hardships, become the biggest impetus to put finances in order. And with that, our quote of the week is, Like mothers, taxes are often misunderstood but seldom forgotten. That's according to Lord Bramble. Thank you, Chris. Maraming salamat sa iyo, Chris. Maraming, maraming, salamat. maraming salamat sa isang oras sa pagsama sa amin upang tunghayan ng isang makabuluhang usapan ukol sa negosyo dito lang sa Open for Business. Hanggang sa susunod na linggo, Join us here in Open for Business. Catch us on Facebook, on YouTube. Like and subscribe on our social media page, which you see on your screens right now. We will bring you more insights from industry experts, thought leaders, CEOs, and featured SMEs. Together, let us help encourage business development in the Philippines. Sharpen your business acumen. Fill the pause and set the trend for as long as you are informed open for business. Ito po si Cesar Vallejos. Marami pong salamat. Mga Kanet 25, this is Cesar Vallejos of Open for Business. For more updates, just click the subscribe button and follow us on Net25 social media pages at Net25 TV and at Net25 Entertainment Facebook pages.